bestseller for over two years. A story has to really connect with people. And Tuesdays with Maury resonates with everybody. I think we all relate to Mitch. His life is just going by too quickly. And then he was blessed to stop and find his old teacher, Maury. And even though Maury was dying, he taught us about living. All of life is about teaching and learning. When you learn, teach, when you get, give. Life is filled with Maury's. We all just need to look around. Many other things. My old professor loved to eat. What do you say? He especially liked tongue. I'd say, Maury, that's disgusting. He'd say, I'm sorry you think so. I also like coleslaw. Can you handle coleslaw, Mitch? Excuse me. Near the top of the list of things he loved was dancing. He had his own way of dancing. He'd do the Lindy to Jimi Hendrix. He'd jitterbug to name a band, Nine Inch Nails. One of his favorites was the tango. His own version, of course. Wherever it came from, Come on, join in. it was in Argentina. Moments like that, he could live in forever. In the summer of 1994, he began to notice a few things. Shortness of breath, legs giving him a little trouble. But what do you expect at 77? stopped forever in the summer of 1994. That was when Maury got his death sentence. Whoa, 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 whoa. Man, when they fall apart, these guys really fall apart, don't they? Is this ugly or is this ugly? I knew it. Everybody's on the floor. Walter, it's Mitch. I gotta change the column. I've got to change the column, Walter. I knew nothing about what happened to my old professor. I hadn't seen him since graduation day 16 years ago. I promised I'd keep in touch, but I got busy dancing my own dance. Walter, it's a zoo here. Just hold the space for me, okay? Give me a break. Have I ever missed a deadline? Hi, now wake you, honey. Everything I did, I did on deadline. I'm such crazy here. Everything. I just want to say I love you and I'm sorry. Coach said no media until he talks to the team. Should have talked to him before the game. Yeah, no, we definitely have to talk. I know. One second. Okay, I gotta go. I love you. Bye bye. Coach, coach, what'd you say to the team? The word discipline come up? <laughs> How about the word maturity? <laughs> Sports are always in season in this country, and I covered them all. Living in planes and hotels with a laptop and a cell phone. 
I might never have known what had happened to Maury if I wasn't always doing six things at once. Jean, come on. Because I've been in love with you for seven years, doesn't it? Yeah, but in my book, that is a commitment. Yeah. Okay, do we have to talk about this now? This is the only thing we ever fight about. Yeah, because look at what marriage does to people. Look, I'm not watching it. It's just on. Look at what marriage does to people. Look at our married friends. Look at our divorced friends. Well, look, I'll be back in Detroit tomorrow. We'll talk about this then, okay? Yeah, well, I'll make time. Just who is Maury Schwartz? And why, by the end of the night, are so many of you going to care about him? Gee, hang on one second. This is ABC News Nightline. One second. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Tonight, Maury. Lessons on living. Maury is going to die. He suffers from a disease called ALS, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Maury Schwartz is a retired sociology professor from Brandeis University who is dying of ALS. Maury does not have long to live. I'm on the last great journey here, one we all gotta take. Maybe I can teach people what to pack for the trip. Vinny? Hello? Now maybe my dying can be of value something we can all learn from like a a human textbook i've been a teacher all my life you think i'm going to quit now <laughs> tim i'm losing yet i'm just getting to work let me call you back okay very good Mark. Hey, mitch. mitch tomorrow's page oh excellent congratulations oh, what the column it's all right a little rushed Oh, it's official, huh? Baseball strike is over. Yeah, which means I need you in Florida for spring training. I thought it was rushed. It read terrific. Oh, I mean, congratulations you. on your sweet little TV deal. Walter, local TV. One Books show and the radio show and whatever show. else you got going, take 20 words out. My column comes first. How many hours you got in your day? What difference does it make? All I'm as saying is that you're spreading yourself a little what thin. What difference does it make? You think you can find a little time to write a piece for the baseball strike ending tomorrow? Hi. It's a personal call. Janine, I Say hello to Janine for me. Hello. Hello, it's me. Will you pick up, please? Janine. Janine, you have to talk to me sometime. Will you pick up the phone, please. All right. Um, I'll uh, I'll come by work, I guess. I love you. should go on strike. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, guys? Hold, hold, hold for a second. Uh, something's not right here. Take a break for a second, ladies. Mitch, make yourself useful, man. Give me an F sharp. That's great. That's F sharp. Hey. Hey. I've been trying to call. Are you uh, ever going to talk to me again? I was talking to you last night, you and the TV, and then I sort of got the idea that you didn't want to talk. I got some bad news last night. Uh, a guy I used to know, a teacher of mine back in college is sick. He's gonna die. Oh, Mitch, I'm sorry. Were you very close to him? I used to be, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, y'all, let's uh, try this. We both gotta work on our phone matters. I love you too. Okay. Let's just pick this up, ladies. It's not just Maury. I haven't kept in touch with anybody from college. Reunions, the mail. Who's got time for that stuff? Well, I wish I had a teacher like that. No, oh, he was more than just a teacher. He was what? Like a force. At this basketball game once, we're all chanting, we're number one. We're number one, right? So I see Maury a couple rows down, his eye in us. He's giving us all this look. All of a sudden, he stands up and says, what's wrong with being number two? <laughs> he, he actually wanted to discuss that right in the middle of the game. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Made a really big difference in my life and never even thanked him. When you talk about him as if he were already dead, you could still go see him. 
It's in Boston. When am I going to find time to go to Boston? Well, make time, if he meant that much to you. You know, you're on the road half your life. Why can't you make time for one trip to Boston? Why are you getting upset? Why are you making excuses? Why do you have such a problem making time in your life? Hey, you're that guy on Mitch's album, right? Yeah, hey. Hey, yeah. man, I read your column every day. Thanks. Mitch, I got an idea for a column. Oh. Guys, I'm in the middle here. Gotcha. Hey, we'll talk later. I get ideas all the time. <laughs> Great. Sorry. Anyway, the truth is, it's just, it's too late. All these years I haven't sent the guy a postcard. I'm just gonna, how am I gonna face him now? Mitch, think, hey, think of him. Think about how much it would mean to him. At least call him. In hockey last night, with a playoff berth at stake and visions of that golden... I lived on the phone, made dozens of calls a day. Why couldn't I make one to a dying man? The simple answer was guilt, but it was more than that. I was afraid of seeing him now. I had a thing about death. Here's my buddy! Hey, hey! You're one of the special ones, Mitch. You're gonna keep in touch. You gotta promise me. I promise. I failed that promise. I also had a thing about failure. Hey, it's me. Well, you were right. I can't work. I can't even think here. I gotta do something. About Maury, I mean. Are you going to go see him? Yeah, it's one trip to Boston. Quick little visit. Say I'm sorry and say goodbye. Well, roll back the take. Let me let me hear the playback again. Okay. No, no, no. I just spilled some coffee. Um, go, go, go ahead. Let me let me hear the playback. You know, I'm listening. I'm listening. That Penalty. sounds fine. Yeah, just just sure. go with that. What, take three? Yes, yeah, is there a lot more? Sure. Seven no, takes. Sure. Well, you know what? We're, we're going to have to do this uh, later. <laughs> Sorry. Got my keys. It's Mitch. Mitch Album? I called. I spoke to your wife. I don't get a hug after 16 years? <laughs> My old buddy, you came to see me at last. Let's eat. So you still like to eat as much as ever. Oh, boy, dig in, huh? Help yourself. Come on, make yourself comfortable. Okay. Look, looks great. <clears throat> well, you look great. Really. Really? Same. Maury, excuse me, can you talk? No, get a name if you could, Connie, because I'm with my buddy now, huh? I spent half the day on the telephone. Now that I'm dying, people are taking more of an interest in me. Ah, mm -hmm. a big celebrity now. How's that feel being a big TV star? I mean, you know, you were always interesting. But, uh... I thought so. Oh. This, this one class, do you remember this, Maury? Um, you didn't say anything? Do you remember that? You just stared at us? <laughs> we all trooped in with our notebooks ready, waiting for you to start casting pearls and, and nothing. <laughs> Five minutes go by, ten minutes. <laughs> we started panicking. Why, why is the guy saying anything? Finally, after like, I think it was 20 minutes of that, when we really can't take it anymore, you say very quietly, What's happening here? Exactly right. What's happening here? That's exactly what you said. You're making a point about silence. What is it about silence that makes people uneasy, huh? Yeah. Right. Why do people only feel comfortable when they're filling the air with words? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell you what it's like? Dying? That's another subject that makes people uncomfortable. We'll get to it later. You know, right now, I gotta go to the commode. <laughs> Are you up to uh, giving me a hand? Um, sure. Well, now, wait a minute. I better get Connie. It takes an expert. Connie, yeah. Uh, 
You know, dying is just one thing to be sad about. Living unhappily, that's another matter. We'll see you in a minute. Okay? Are you happy in Detroit? Yeah. Best town to be in for a sports writer. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, you name it. Are you giving to your community? I, I, they're nuts for sports, you know? That's what I give them every day in my column. Are you at peace with yourself? <laughs> Are you, I can't complain. Uh-huh. What happened to the music? Wasn't that your passion, to be a great pianist? Yeah. Yeah, I gave it a shot. And I grew up. <laughs> you grew up, huh? Married with kids? Uh, no. Haven't found anybody to share your heart with, huh? No, yes, I have. Definitely. Oh. Not enough to get married? Uh, no. Well, yeah, yes. I mean, you know, someday. But, uh, just when we're both ready. When you're both ready... Has she got a name? Janine. Janine? That's a very beautiful name. So Janine shares this when we're both ready thing with you? No. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I can see, Mitch, that we're going to have a great deal to talk about. What are you writing? One more question. Yeah. You know anything about this disease that I've got here, this Lou Gehrig's disease? It melts you like a candle, you know? In my case, from the bottom up. That's my legs. <laughs> One first. Hands will be next, and eventually it'll get the whole body. But you know what I dread? Someday soon, somebody's gonna have to wipe my ass for me. But I'm a lucky man. You're lucky? Yeah. I still got time to learn. Time to say goodbye to the people I love. And time to teach my final course. About dying. Not about dying, about living. When you know how to die, you know how to live. No, 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 no. Well, you can't do that, can you? Oh, well, let me hear it again. Dave, you know what? I, I can't do this right now. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm leaving for the airport in five minutes. Can I call you from the car? Yeah, just give me five minutes, okay? Thanks a lot, man. Those were my dancing days. Did you ever see me dance? No. So you do a lot of things, but uh, never dance. That's too bad, because they tell me it was something to see. <laughs> I'll bet. Why don't you keep it? Oh, no. Are you sure? Yeah. You remember that nickname you used to give me? Okay, here we go. Oh. Ah. Coach. I, I called you. you Coach. Yeah? Easy. Okay. Uh. Somehow I could never call you Professor Schwartz. Yeah, well, I like being called Coach. Ah, maybe I should have gotten a whistle. <laughs> What's the matter? You gotta go? Yeah. Well, you'll be back. Well, I don't know, Coach. Uh, Detroit is 700 miles, you know. It's a bit of a time problem. Well, uh, let me show you something about time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Went to sixteen last week. Kid like you, I bet you go to a hundred. You know, it's a good thing to count your breaths now and then. Keeps you from putting things off. Come here. I'm still your coach. You promised me that you'll come back to see your old coach, huh? I promised. I tried not to think about the last time I promised. Hello. Yeah, no, I have time now. Let's hear it. What are the truly important questions in life, and where do we go to find the answers? There are many paths on which to seek the truth. Me, I go to press conferences. Today in this humble high school stadium, I will learn the answer to the question of questions. What college will two-time All-State quarterback Sean Daly choose to pursue his higher education? And maybe play a little football. All you guys been covering my career. 
know that I have a dream, which is to play in the NFL. So I've been real careful looking over all my scholarship offers to choose the best one to make my dream come true. Sean, what are you planning on getting your degree in? Well, I'm only going to be there two years, then I'll go pro. I mean, I mean, of, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna study hard and prove my education, see what happens. And the truth shall set you free, or make your first round draft choice. The college I've chose to go to is. Moment of truth is here, folks. On every lip is one prayer. Please, God, let it be us. <laughs> Sounds like another good one. Hmm? I'm hungry too. Two minutes of deadline. We'll go to dinner. Two minutes. You believe a major press conference for a high school jock? I wonder what Maury would think of that. I know what he'd think. What kind of message does that send to kids who actually crack a book, study their butts off and get scholarships, and who's going to hold a press conference for them? Mitch, I'm going to my place tonight. Wherever you want to eat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? It's okay, keep working. I'm just tired. I'm gonna go. What are you talking about? We're going to dinner like we always do. What's the matter? Nothing. I have a session tomorrow. I just want to go home. If we lived together, you'd be home, but two minutes of deadline, okay? Yeah, you have a career. You understand deadlines. I'm a backup singer. That's not a career. It's a job. You could have a great career if you really wanted it. I don't know what I want anymore. Well, you're too good to keep singing backup. That's all I know. Mitch, that's not what I'm talking about. I can't just keep going on like this, you know, waiting for you to fit me in. I, I, I gotta just think about what I want. So do you. Sorry, I did not mean to get into this now. I'm gonna call you. Janine, please don't go. Janine, wait. Can you, obviously, we need to talk. Obviously, we will talk. I just need one minute, okay? Please, I love you. It's coming in one minute. One minute. God, please, just give me a second, please. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good time, Mitch. Any other time, I'd say okay. Take a few days off, relax. Nothing no, you Come wouldn't. On, we got playoffs. We got tennis, spring training. I know. You want to take some time? Why don't you cut back from one of your other jobs? Walter, do you people work here? I want you on the road, Mitch. Walter, I I need to be here. It's personal. Okay. Oh, Janine, marriage thing again. I could recommend a hell of a counselor. <laughs> we got divorced anyway. Walter, Look, Mitch. Can I just? I need you. Something? Detroit needs you. I'm sorry about your problems, but you know what? The world doesn't stop. Okay. No, no, no. Come on. No ground rules. I left Janine with promises. We'd talk, we'd get help. As soon as I got back. Meanwhile, Walter was right. The world didn't stop. Guys, you got time for a couple of questions? Guys, Sam, what happened in the fourth quarter? Danny, was your knee bothering you? I remembered my promise to Maury, but when would I find time to keep it? The strike wasn't about money. It was never about money. Gee, how, how do we miss that? It was about our worth as human beings. Our self-worth isn't being validated. But you're not a player. You wouldn't understand. America had become a bazaar of self-help. Books, TV shows, $100 an hour experts, all of them with answers to the big important questions. What did Maury think of that? He wasn't in the self-help business. He was standing on the tracks with death's locomotive whistling toward him. His mind had become a lightning rod for ideas. He saw things with incredible clarity. I wanted that clarity. I thought I had it once. Who I was, what I wanted, what had happened to me. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, You almost missed the funeral. No, it was Maury's idea, a living funeral. He oh. said he didn't want to wait till he was dead for people to say nice things about him. Go on in. I love coffee and tea. I love the Java Java and it loves me. 
Coffee and tea and the jiving and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Boy! That's terrific. Oh. Now listen, you've all said such beautiful things. Believe it or not, now I want to talk. Oh. <laughs> all I have is a voice. We know, Dad, we yeah, know. That's, that's not the me. That's, that's from W.H. Auden, my favorite poet. We know that too, Dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> all I have is a voice to undo the folded lie. The lie of authority whose buildings grope the sky. No one exists alone. Hunger allows no choice to the citizen or police. We must love one another or die. We must love one another or die. See you soon. It's a lovely morning. Thank you. Hi. Be well. <laughs> Thank you. I know I should have called. I'm stealing time from my boss here. You missed my funeral. Never mind. You'll catch the next one. You're not saying much today. What's wrong with silence? <laughs> you know what I miss? Springtime on campus, huh? That was always the best time. Yeah, for you professors, maybe. For us lowly students, spring meant one thing, cramming for finals. Oh, yeah. A beautiful day like this, and we may just spend it buried in the book. Yeah. Throw down your books. You have nothing to lose but your graves. <laughs> Coach, you ever wish you were young again? Yeah. I've been young. I know how miserable it can be being young. Oh, push me down there, huh? Aging isn't just decay, you know, it's growth. So how come nobody ever says, gee, I wish I were old? Because this culture worships youth. Me, I do not buy it. Well, I've had my time to be 22. This is my time to be 78. So you were never afraid of getting old? Oh, the fear of aging. Uh, you know what that reflects, Mitch? Lives that haven't found meaning. I've got friends. The light changed. Oh. Hey, stop here. This is where I used to dance. Dance free? Yeah. No wonder they went out of business. Well, but not that kind of free, Mitch. Oh. I used to think if I couldn't dance, I couldn't live. Sometimes I see myself dancing, and I think, wow, oh boy, I don't have ALS after all. It's, it's, it's a big mistake. It's all part of a lovely fantasy, but just for a minute. Fantasy is useful, you can learn from it, but uh, this, this is what's real, and I accept it. But is it really that easy? I mean, don't you ever feel sorry for yourself? Oh, good call, you bet. God, I'm... Usually in the morning, you know, before everybody gets up, I get so angry, so bitter. I just, what the hell did I ever do to deserve this? Where's the fairness? What? At least I cry and I... rage I mourn and then I detach it's over that's it all over no more. I just look back on how I've been feeling and I say well that's self-pity and that's enough of that for today just like that you just stop yeah that's all the time I give it start thinking about the day ahead you know the people that are going to come to see me, the stories that I'm going to hear, and all the stuff I'm going to learn, like from you, Mitch. 
from me. There's a place that I've got to go now, Mitch. I hope you can handle it. <laughs> yeah, I think the chocolate opera's the best of all, but they don't carry it. How you doing, Mari? You I'm... ready for a good beating? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, you ready for a beating? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get a zipper. I know. <laughs> So. Oh, hey, Mrs. Schwartz. Oh, please. Call me Charlotte, Mitch. Did he ever stop talking? No. I was afraid I was going to tire him out. Oh, he never gets tired if he's got friends to talk to. I'm so glad you came back. You were one of his favorites. You going back to work? Just for a couple of hours. <sighs> I hope you'll come again. Charlotte, and wasn't that a great funeral today, huh? What a turnout. <laughs> How does he do it? How does he stay so cheerful all the time? Well, sometimes the nights are difficult for him. They really are. Charlotte! Come in, dear. Every time Aldo works me over, I feel like he's giving me an extra couple of days, you know? <laughs> you like massage? Uh, not really, no. No? Oh, boy, I revel in it. You know what's funny? Some people just don't like to be touched. I always found that rather odd. When we're babies, we live to be touched. To be held cuddled by your mother, comforted. We never seem to get enough of that. We need it so badly. I... Are they, uh... Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I cry a lot. <laughs> Maybe you noticed. Do you cry, Mitch? Ah. All of this makes you uncomfortable, doesn't it? I, the crying and touching, I, I see you look away. I guess I'm just not really a touchy-feely guy. Yeah, it you know? scares you. Doesn't scare me. Yes, it scares you. All this does. Everything we're talking about. Death, dying. There is a reason why people don't talk about these things. Mm -hmm. you know? Spare people's feelings. To spare people's feelings. I never have understood that. How can you spare someone's feelings by denying them? Oh, you got a plane? No. You're not the only one who has to use the commode sometimes, you know? Oh. Mm. Days like this, you used to hold classes outside. Ah, today is Tuesday. Tuesdays, I used to hold office hours. Oh, right, tutorials, when you'd rip apart my papers. <laughs> and we'd talk. And we'd talk. You were the first grown-up who ever talked to me who wasn't a relative. And we're still talking. Only maybe you think what I'm talking about doesn't apply to you now. You know who I forgot to ask you about? Your girlfriend with the beautiful name, uh, uh, Janine. Janine. Yeah, now, am I ever going to meet her? Oh, I don't know, Coach. Um, I don't know, Coach. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. You still don't know how to say goodbye, do you? Still. Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, Mitch. I'm gonna get to you one of these days, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Would you forget something? When can I come back? Office hours are Tuesdays. We're Tuesday people, Mitch.
love. What is love anyway? Can anybody tell me what that word really means? The temperamental U.S. Open champ waxed philosophical as he denied he was having an affair. We're not in love. We're just friends. Love is what I feel for my God and my wife. <laughs> There he goes again. This guy's not having a good week. Oh, oh. Yes. How do you guys sleep at night? Eh? Some of them sleep with their wives. <laughs> Media out! Oh. Out! Why don't you clock out already and come over and join us? Come on. I'll be there in a minute. Yeah. Very mature. <laughs> Hello? Hey, I didn't wake you, did I? I just wanted to hear your voice. No, I was going to call you. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Yeah, so have I. Mitch. I don't think we should see each other anymore. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, wait, no, let me... no, 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 just let me say this. I can't keep pretending that we're ever going to be a real couple because I know in my heart that we are never going Please to be. Please don't say that, Janine. Mitch, this is so hard. But I can't wait anymore. We just don't want the same things. Yeah, so That's we... not true. I love you. I know I... you love me. And I love you. But... I need more than that. Okay. Oh Can you please just not do this on the phone? I, I will get a plane. I will come home no, tonight. No, bitch, I don't. I won't be here. It's too late. Janine. I can't be with you anymore. I'm sorry. Hello? Janine? Hello? Hey, mystery woman. You sneaking her out. Food man. Hey, Connie. Hey. Is that Mitch? Must be Tuesday. It's Mitch. How you doing, coach? Hope you haven't eaten already, because I got some very good stuff here. Ah, uh, what do you got? I got some hummus. Ah. I got pita bread, nice and warm. Yeah. I got apple cobbler. Uh -huh. And I got, I got that. Tom! Oh. You, re <laughs> you remember. Oh, um, you don't forget somebody eating tongue. No, no. It, it's like a repressed memory. It actually attacks me in the middle yeah. of the night. What is that? Well, if you're going to keep giving me this meaning of life stuff, I want to remember it. I'd like your voice. When I'm dead? No, don't say that. Mitch, I'm dying. It's been established. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a pretty big machine, huh? Must have cost you a fortune. You know what? This is a stupid intrusion. I'm sorry. I'm going to put it away. Hey, you still don't understand. I want you to remember, and I want people to know my story. That's a very nice machine. Now put it back. Go on. Okay. Now, do you want to hear a real tragedy? I can't eat tongue anymore. But I'm going to save it. Maybe I should have it mounted and hang it in my study, huh? Okay. So 
I made a list of subjects for you to talk about. All the heavy stuff. Death, love, marriage, family. Oh, all of the stuff that you're scared of. Huh. Things I want to hear you talk about. And you're scared of. Why be ashamed? Everybody's afraid of those things. Add fear to the list. You don't seem to be scared. I told you, I have my early morning moments. Did you ever know anybody who was dying? Yeah, I had an uncle, Mike. He was young. He was more of a brother, really. Testing, testing. <clears throat> Mike taught me football, taught me music, taught me how to drive. <laughs> We used to drive around this empty lot for hours. Yeah, he was 42 when he died. <clears throat> Cancer. And you never talked about it? We did what people do, you know. We pretended nothing was wrong. Mm. That's actually when I gave up music, when Mike died. Oh, yeah, when you grew up, huh? When I woke up, coach. So I better get moving if I'm going to make anything out of my life. Well, you made a big success. I always knew you would. But you ran. Did you ever stop to think about what you're running from? What do you want to tackle first here? Death? Love? What about marriage? That's a good one. Stickball. Stickball? Yeah, did you ever play stickball? Uh, no, kids don't play stickball anymore, really. I played Little League. They don't play anymore? Oh, that's too bad. Stickball was what all of the slum kids played, you know, where I grew up. Manhattan, the Lower East Side. A broom handle and a rubber ball was all you needed. You could play anywhere. The best place to play was right outside the candy store. My mother ran for the landlord. Moisha, do you must be your health and dark My mother was only 25, but she was sick as long as I could remember. I felt if I ignored it, maybe the sickness would go away. What happened to her? She went to the hospital, and she died there. <laughs> They sent us a telegram. My father couldn't read English, so I had to read it. Hit the emistic of the door. Losing me a dear information. As I recall, for a many spots, is gestorben. That's how I learned that my mother had died. I still got the telegram. It's all that's left of my mother, except memories. So you grew up with your father? My father, he was an immigrant from Russia, a very silent man. He never showed what he really felt. After my mother died, he... He'd come home from work, when he could get work. And he'd never come in the house. He'd stay outside, read the newspaper, until he knew I was asleep. What was he feeling? See, I never knew. <laughs> was he in pain? Was he suffering? I... All I knew was that, that I needed his love. I needed him to hold me so I wouldn't be so afraid. never got it, though, did you? No, not from him. He remarried about a year later. Of course, I resented her at first. I pushed her away. But she was a wonderful woman. And from her, after I stopped being such a little smartass, I finally began to get the love that I'd been missing. What about your father? Did things get better? He did something... God, I found very, very hard to forgive. He said I had a new mother and that I should forget. He wouldn't even let me talk about my mother. It was like she never existed. need help here. I think we should stop. No, I want you to hear this. My father was afraid of love. He couldn't give it. 
He couldn't receive it either. Maybe that's worse. Maury, Maury, uh, we should Not stop. letting ourselves be loved because we're too afraid of giving ourselves to someone we might lose. <sighs> Um, yeah. Connie! Connie! Uh, Connie! Connie! Okay, okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Where the hell are you? You're supposed to be in New York for the playoffs. Yeah, I'll be there tonight, Walter. Oh, hey, it's only the playoffs. Hey, what is this number? Have you got another TV thing going? How many jobs have you got? It's got nothing to do with work. I just... I thought that the column came Walter. first. This is personal, okay? I just need a little bit of time. You, know, you have time for everybody but me. I got plenty of guys here dying to write a column. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, you think Detroit can't live without you? I don't know. Why don't you find out? You know that comp time you've got built up? I strongly suggest that you take it. You do whatever the hell you want to. Well, fine, I will. Fine. There we go. Soon have you back in the chair. Okay, I'm just gonna get your feet clear. Connie? Connie, show me how to do that. Hmm. Okay. Come on over here. Okay, now bend down. Slide your arms under his like you're lifting a log. Okay. Okay. Like now, this? I can't help you at all, honey. Yeah, it has to be all you. All right. Now lift. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'll get it. Okay. Uh, give it a uh, okay. Okay, good. Uh, all right, I got you. I got you. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. You got it. Sorry. You all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'll get better at it. <laughs> Don't look so sad because I'm going to die, Mitch. Everybody's going to die, even you. But most people don't believe it. They should have a bird on their shoulder. That's what the Buddhists do. Just imagine a little bird on your shoulder, and every day you say, is this the day I'm gonna die, little bird? Huh? Am I ready? Am I leading the life I want to lead? Am I the person that I want to be? If we accept the fact that we can die at any time, we lead our lives differently. So every day you say, is this the day? Hmm? One sec, one sec. Okay, go ahead. If you did have a bird on your shoulder, you wouldn't put off the things closest to your heart. I didn't need the recorder to hear his voice anymore. It was always in my mind now. I thought of his helpless weight in my arms as I lifted him. That frail, failing body, and the voice, the spirit inside, at its ruthless mercy. Like the jet stream outside my window. And not just from Maury. I'd taken Maury's advice. I'd put a bird on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. Come on in, baby. Let's hear it back. <laughs> oh, hey, Mitch, man, I see hey. you. So what do you think? Oh, I couldn't hear it. I was outside. No, no, no. I mean, about her going solo. No more backup. She can tell you we're going to lay down some tracks. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, man. She's got the voice. I mean, all she needs is the want to. 
Very nice, baby. Let's do playback. Hi. Hi. Where is that worn out wish that I threw aside after? This sounds great. My lover needs. Can we go someplace after this? I really need to talk to you. Mitch, we broke up. Don't do this, please. Hi, well, guys. I think it's great you're going out on your own, really. Well, I'm singing. That's enough for me. Uh, so I, I've been seeing a lot of Maury. How's he doing? He's amazing. When I'm with him, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't even take my cell phone with me anymore. That is amazing. Uh, he's made me think about a lot of things, and, uh, well, he always asks about you. He really wants to meet you. Will you, will you come with me to see him next Tuesday? I, I want you to get to know him the way How can you do I... this? How can you just blow in and expect me to come back into your life as though nothing's happened? Something has happened. Look, Janine, I have something to say to you, and, uh, I really can't do it here. Will you, will you come home with me, please? I can't. I'm sorry. Janine, come on, please. Maury sounds wonderful. He's done something for you. I can see that. I wish I could have met him, but it's just too late. Okay, Janine, Janine, please. Can we just talk for once? Months ago, Sean Daly, 18, a hot college prospect, had a brilliant future. Cut to last night. Sports car, drinking, drugs, tree. Well, you know the story. If they cancel my scholarship, it's like my life is over. I'm dead. Yeah, right, Sean. You're 18, you're in perfect health, you maybe blow a scholarship and you think you're dead? Got your whole life left to screw up in, you stupid idiot. On his way home from yet another night of toasting, Sean crashed his brand new GTO jockmobile into an innocent tree. Sean, who managed to squeak past his SATs, had no such luck with his drug and alcohol. With no daily deadlines, no Janine, I had lots of time on my hands. I thought of Maury counting his breaths, what time meant to him. Work, money, ambition. We bury ourselves in these things but we never stand back and say, is this what I want? Unless somebody teaches us to. Well, you all need teachers, Mitch. Why'd you become a teacher? I needed a job. Lots of jobs pay better than teacher. You could have been a doctor or a lawyer. I hate the sight of blood, and I hate lawyers. <laughs> so what made you become a teacher? <coughs> well, you think there's only one reason why we do things? <coughs> In a way, because of my father. Your father? Yeah, it's... He, Is this him? Yeah, yeah. Well, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would encourage you. He didn't. He tried to get me started in his trade. What did he do? Sewed fur coats together, you know, when he could find work. There was this factory, the sweatshop. Third Street and Avenue B. You still remember the address? I will never forget that place. It was the only work he knew, and he hated it. But he wanted you to work in it? What could he do? Hunger allows no choice. I'd hear him complain to my stepmother, you know, how he was cursed at, belittled, always pushed to do more, and denied the money he had coming. That was my father's world. It was gonna be my world too, except I found out something that day. Did you do anything but that? Something else. It's when I learned I had asthma. Of course, they thought I was just a crybaby, that I was scared. Well, they were right about my being scared, but there was something else. I made a vow that I would never do work that used people. That hurt them and degraded them. I was never going to make money off the sweat and pain of others. So in a way, you owe your father. My, uh, my, my, my stepmother, Ava, uh, she was just the opposite. 
Everything I love about education, I learned from her. The father of our country is Washington. It's what I call the tension of opposites. The tension of opposites. Life pulling you back and forth like a rubber band. You know? Pull you one way, you think that's what you want to do. Pull you another way, you think that's what you have to do. Sounds like a wrestling match. Well, you could describe life that way. So who wins? Love. Love always wins. You don't believe that? I don't know, maybe I don't. I mean, have you looked at the news lately? Love's not exactly racking up the gold medals out there. Yeah. Maybe the game isn't over yet. What are we, we're through? Coach, can I talk to you for a second, just as a friend? Because that's the way we always talk. Now, why did you stop the tape? Well, because this is, um... Uh, I need a little help here. Um, I bought a ring for Janine, uh, an engagement ring. Congratulations! Does this mean I finally get to meet her? <laughs> well, um... Look, I'm ready to make the plunge. I really am. I'm talking marriage, family, the whole nine. Everything I've been putting off up to this point, basically. But, um, you know, okay, I take her way too much for granted. You know, I always have. I know that. And I believe me, I know what a selfish jerk I can be, especially with my time. But, um, you know, it's, it's what you said. It's about this fear that I had of not just giving love, but receiving it. And, uh, and of being part of something that isn't just all about me. And, um, you know, uh, living for somebody else and... Uh, uh, learning to give, and, um... She didn't like the ring. Well, I never even got to give it to her. Well, but you love each other. Yes, we do. A lot. Uh-huh. So if love always wins, what the heck is the matter with us? <laughs> I could use a little, little wisdom here. Maybe my wisdom isn't what you need. Start that thing again. This is our last thesis together. We got to get it right. We don't have a lot of time. <laughs> we think we don't deserve love, that if we let it come in, we'll become soft. He had answers for all the big, important things. Man, not me, a guy named Why not me? Said it right. Love is the only rational act. Said it right. Love is the only rational act. Let it come in. Okay, I'll be right down. Thanks, Lloyd. I'll just be a couple of minutes. I hate sports metaphors. I never use them. But this was a real Hail Mary. A last-second desperation play. I wrote a letter to Janine. Everything I'd never said to her. Including the part where I begged her to marry me. Tuesday neared, I had plenty of time to think what a stupid idea it was. Mitch, Walter, call me, please. I've got a temper, so do you. It goes with the job, just I'm trying to tell you that I'm... As for an aisle, you're going to find me an aisle. Is that too much what to ask? What the hell happened to the air conditioning? It's not the airline's here. fault, sir. Just wait your turn. Hey, back off, Al. Passengers I got a big, big problem here. Please consult well, the What are you going to do? This is a no. Why don't you just call me? Because I don't know what the answer is. Whatever Maury did that made you write that letter. I want to see for myself. Food man's back. Oh, Whoops. Library time. 
Hey, how's he doing today? Not so good. You can put the food in the kitchen and uh, I'll, I'll go get him. Uh, Connie? Connie? I'd, I'd like you to meet Janine. Oh, hi. I'm sorry, honey. So many people come through that door. Sometimes I forget my manners. Very nice hi. to meet you. All right, let's see. Can you take some of this stuff off this table for me, please? You can just put it right up there. You all right? Yeah. It's going to be fine. The two people I love most are finally going to meet each other. There's my buddy. Hey, coach. <laughs> How you doing today? All right. <laughs> What'd you bring today? I have some grape leaves. Oh, boy. I got some pasta salad. Uh, nice warm pita bread. Oh, you always bring the right things. Oh. Oh, uh, I brought something else with me today, coach. Maury. This is Janine. Yeah, Janine. Can I tell you something? You're as lovely as your name. Thank you. <laughs> Maury, huh? tell Janine the story you told me about the ocean. The ocean, oh, oh, the, the little wave? Yeah. Yeah, it's a sweet little story. See, this is a little wave. And he's out there bobbing up and down and having a grand old time. Oh, just enjoying the sunshine and the right, wind. Until he, sees, until he sees the other waves. Yeah. He sees the other waves crashing into the shore, so he gets scared. And another wave sees right, him and He's says, like, oh my God, look at what's going to happen to me. Does he do this to you? I'm trying to tell a story here. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. And another wave says to him, why do you look so sad? And the little wave says, because we're going to crash. All us waves are going to be nothing. Don't you understand? And the other wave says, you don't understand. You're not a wave. You're part of the ocean. Part of the ocean. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful story. <sighs> okay, no, I got you. <sighs> okay, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My helper, that one. This tells me you're a wonderful singer, a professional, huh? Well, I mostly sing backup. Backup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, background, you know? The humming and the ooing that makes the singer sound good, but she's not really going to do that anymore. Oh, you don't like the humming and ooing? Huh? No, no, it's just that she's going to be the one out front now. I like singing, any kind. Yeah, but let somebody else back her up. I don't feel like I have to be number one. What's wrong with being oh. number two? <laughs> oh, would you sing for me? You know what, Coach? Everybody asks her that. I'll tell you what, she's recording now. I'll bring you a tape next time. Wouldn't that be nice? Would you excuse us for a few minutes? Ex me? Yeah, just go make some phone calls or something like that, would you? Sure. Bye. Please don't get up. You look exhausted. So is it, it's really bad? Yeah, it's getting to his lungs. A couple times there, I thought we were really going to lose him. It's a damn shame. He's such a sweet man. Forget to do 
The little ordinary things that everyone ought to do. I see your face in every flower, your eyes in stars above. It's just the thought of you, the very thought of you, my love. <laughs> there be tears <laughs> Mitch doesn't believe in tears I'll get to him someday <laughs> you ever gonna tell me what you talked about he told me how much you love dancing that's all no Mostly you let me talk. <sighs> so many times I've heard you sing. Never like that. Um. The letter I wrote. I guess it wasn't the best way. The ring that you gave me was beautiful. <laughs> but you gave it back to me. Well, when you give it to me again, it's like for you to do it in person. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I talk to Charlotte almost daily now. She told me about the bad times that I rarely saw on our Tuesdays together. Now I was afraid that each Tuesday would be our last. He hasn't been able to eat solid food for some time now, Mitch. I'm sorry, Charlotte. I just want to bring him something, you know? <laughs> Boy, maybe I shouldn't stay today, huh? Oh, don't be silly. He's been asking for you all morning. Where's Mitch? It's Tuesday. You bring him a great deal, Mitch. Bring him so much. see such rain oh I was thinking about the kids trying to move their stuff into the dorms out of the cars it must be getting all wet ah. uh. these days some of them hire people to do that for them oh uh. they go off and have a latte somewhere so how you feeling coach oh I passed the landmark remember what I said about someday somebody having to wipe my ass 
out there. You're not going to expect me to do that, are you? Why not? You might be good at it. You know, the culture teaches us to be ashamed of that. See, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. You, know, you always, are, hey, you always start before to, I'm ready. Huh? You always start before I'm ready. Wait. Uh, okay. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. You okay? Uh, Coach, maybe we shouldn't work today, huh? You look like you should be in bed to me. Well, if you're in bed, you're dead. That's my latest aphorism. We're going to work, and the subject is dependency. Go. I'm dependent on others for just about everything, you know, eating, urinating, blowing my nose. The culture says I should be ashamed of that. Uh, since when have you ever done what the culture says? Uh, since never. There is nothing innately shameful about being dependent. What's the matter? Oh, my feet, the, the subsav over there. I, they're, they're useless, you know, but they hurt. I, I, you know. When we're infants, we need others to survive. When we're dying, we need others to survive. But here's the secret. In between, we need others even more. We must love one another or die. Ah, quoting Auden, huh? No, I'm quoting you. Huh? I do that a lot these days. Once you learn how to die, you learn how to live. Yeah, but do you believe that? Does it apply to you? I don't know. You listen to that little bird on your shoulder, you'll believe. It's not that easy, Coach. Out in the world, it's kind of hard to get in touch with your inner bird. <laughs> you ever try being spiritual in a locker room full of naked jocks? You hate that word, don't you, spiritual? You think it's just touchy-feely stuff, huh? Well, I guess I just don't understand it. We must love one another or die. It's a very simple lesson, Mitch. A good student like you shouldn't have any trouble. What are you thinking about? I was thinking about regrets. What do you have to regret? Oh, so much. Pride, vanity, hardness of heart. When were you ever hard-hearted? I had a strange dream. How? I saw my father under a tree. He was reading his paper as usual. You know how my father died? I think he was scared to death. How? Well, it was after I was grown up. One night he was walking and reading his paper like he always did. Some muggers pulled a gun on him. He threw his wallet down and ran. Now, he had seen terrible things in his life. Why was he so scared that night? I don't he ran until his heart gave out. I got a call from the police. Come down to the morgue and identify him. I looked at my father, I didn't even cry. I've got tears for everything nowadays, but I couldn't cry for him. I couldn't forgive him. Not then. But you did. Yeah, it was too late. First, I had to understand and forgive myself. All those years that I shut my heart to him. Why couldn't I stop and see what was in his? God, that poor man was scared most of his life. I was selfish. I, just, I thought of nothing but how I'd needed him. Oh, God, the waste of it all! I... 
forgive everybody everything. Now, don't wait. Not everybody has the time that I'm getting. I won't die like he did. <laughs> I'll be surrounded by love. My family, my friends. At peace. Yes, the tension of opposites. We learn from what hurts us as much as what loves us. in your bedroom before well, i hope you never see it again when you're in bed you're dead yeah well sometimes a bed's just for sleeping okay it's all over mark there you go oh how's the congestion today huh uh, let's see what we can knock loose huh oh whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what are you doing what are you doing oh boy well, he's got all this poison in his lungs and oh. this Keeps it from solidifying. Oh, feel it in there, Maury, huh? Uh, you feel it loosening? There's something loosening. Uh, oh, maybe it's my ribs. Uh, Mitch, telephone. Uh, saved by the bell, huh? <laughs> uh, Hello? Hey, buddy, it's Walter. Finally got you on the phone. Yeah, sorry. I should have called. Yeah, look, um, Janine told me about... You know, your friend back there. Uh, should have said something. Um, anyway, I'll make this short. I was wrong, and I'm sorry. Just uh, tell me how far I have to crawl. No, 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 no. We were both wrong. I'm sorry, too. So, uh, will I see you in the office? Walter, I got that paper. I can't just stop things here, Mitch. I, I gotta know. Yeah. I'll see you in the office, Walter. do this okay with you Mari yeah okay it has to be hot it's the only way to break up all that wicked congestion so his body can eliminate it okay all right <clears throat> look harder than that harder than that yeah there under the shoulder okay that's it harder good Knock the poison loose, man. Knock it loose. Uh, I always knew uh, you wanted to hit me. Uh, uh. This is for that B you gave me sophomore year, boy. Uh, <laughs> when did I ever give you B? Uh, uh. Six, seven, eight, nine. The large lessons ten. of life. We're sometimes given the opportunity to learn them. But how do we know we're going to be able to keep them? I know I will, Mr. Album. I've had real excellent counseling, and I've learned from my mistakes. It's like I had my whole life given back to me. When they drop the drug charges? Yes, sir. They let me keep my scholarship. Hey, Nelly! We need you down here! How can we ever be sure that we've learned anything, though? Well, like I said, I learned my lesson. And I'm never going to forget. Hey, Sean, we need you down here I now. gotta go, sir. Thanks for your time. Hey, Sean. Hope you're right, man. I was glad to be writing again, even if it meant Walter screaming about deadlines. 
He screamed louder when I asked for two weeks off to go to the islands. I got one. We made the best of it. We called Maury. He cried, of course, which I took as a sign that things were still normal. When we got home, I got another day off from Walter. Tuesday. I told him I was going to need all my Tuesdays for a while. <clears throat> so I'm typing up the thesis. What there is of it, anyway. Uh, I thought you might want to read it over. Of course, we're not finished yet. Oh. So I had a thought. It was kind of weird. Wait, wait. I, I don't think the tape is rolling. Oh. Okay, so uh, weird thought. Uh, if somebody could wave a magic wand and give you one day, 24 hours of uh, perfect health, how would you spend it? It's a weird thought. It's a good thought. Oh, 20 more hours. Care to share it with the world? Uh. I'd have a lovely breakfast, sweet rolls and tea, and a good swim. I'd ask my friends for lunch, great lunch, you know, but a salad or something simple. But, and then we'd take a walk in a park, you know, with trees, so we could watch the birds. And we'd talk about how much we meant to each other. And for dinner, I'd take them to a place that had great pasta. Oh, boy. And a little duck. Yeah, I love duck. Do you like duck? Yeah. Yeah. And then I would dance. Oh, I'd dance with my, my lovely partners until I was exhausted. Then I'd go home and have a great sleep. That's it? That's your perfect day, huh? Yeah. Sounds pretty simple. Oh. What about Charlotte and your sons? You didn't mention them. Well, I don't have to mention them. I mean, if they weren't there, how could it be a perfect day? <laughs> oh, I, I picked a spot to be buried. It's on a hill under a tree. It's got a pond. Great place to think. You planning on doing a lot of thinking there? I plan on being dead there. Will you come and visit and tell me your problems? Won't be quite the same, not hearing you talk. Well, I'll tell you what. When I'm dead, you talk. I'll listen. What if, uh, you know, after your, uh, What if all this was just, what if, what if all this was just wasted on me? Well, you think that could happen? Well, out in the world, you know, outside this room, things aren't so clear. Your wisdom and your aphorisms, once you learn how to die, you learn how to live. What if you can't learn that? What if you just want to run like hell when you see death coming? What if, uh, we're like your father, you know, what if we, we can't learn it because... We're not really like you. Yeah, but you are like me. Everybody is. Nobody's like you. And if it took your death to teach me these things, then I'd rather not learn them. All the things you said, I'd give them back in one minute. If this wasn't happening to you. It's happening. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, well, I don't want it to happen. I don't want you to die. That poem you're always quoting, um, we have to love one another or die. We die anyway, don't we? We learn to love somebody and they die or, or we die or it dies. What's the point? What, what do we learn, really, from all that suffering? Hold. I'm sorry. 
I just can't accept it. I don't want you to die. I guess I flunked the course, huh? Death ends a life, not a relationship. Poor Mitch. You still don't know how to say goodbye, do you? Look at me. Don't you understand? You touched me. What if you hadn't come back to see me? Huh? This is the way we say goodbye. I love you too, Coach. I know. You want to know something else? You always will. <laughs> I'm going to come back next Tuesday, okay? Yeah. I'm yeah. bring Janine with me, okay, next Tuesday. next Tuesday. We're Tuesday people. <laughs> Maury died on a Saturday morning. We got the call that afternoon. Hello? Oh. He had died peacefully and simply with all his family around him. Just the way he wanted it. Charlotte kept it small, just family and friends, all the ones who would have taken dancing on his perfect day. Of course, there was poetry. He shall die. Take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and worship not the garish sun. When I'm dead, you talk. I'll listen. It wasn't that hard to hear his voice. It was Tuesday. Have you ever had a special teacher? One who taught you things you may not understand, but who never gives up? Who knows the really tough lessons take a lifetime to learn? The last class of my old professor's life took place once a week on Tuesdays. The subject was the meaning of life. The teaching goes on. <laughs>